Do not take product if you are hypersensitive. internet and welcome back to the intoxicated podcast if you're brand new to the show this is like a drinking variety talk show where usually i have a friend on they pick a drink and we sit down and talk about various subjects that are relevant to them i'll be honest guys this week did not go as planned for me uh over the last weekend here i had an amazing recording session with my friends jay and kat it was a wonderful night The episode was amazing. I walked away from it feeling like it was the best couples episode I've ever done. And that's saying a lot because I really love the couples episodes. We talked for like two solid hours. We did a bonus episode for Patreon. We even had a jam session afterwards because Jay and Kat are musicians. Very, very talented musicians. Then on Sunday night, I was sitting down. I was doing some editing, getting her done early, being a keener. Got about half an hour through the episode, decided that I should save it at this point because I really should have saved it on the first cut which is what I normally do. See the thing is is that I work on a MacBook Air with very little space and I recently freed up like 30 gigs of space on my MacBook so I was kind of getting a little bit cocky with space but of course Audacity started acting up on me so I thought okay I gotta save it. Kept getting errors saying that there's not enough space on your computer. So normally I keep a raw version of the project file and an edited version of the project file. This particular time I couldn't get the edited version to save. So I started deleting files, started throwing old episodes in the trash bin. And then Audacity crashed and I lost my whole file. And I thought, no biggie, I'll just reopen Audacity and it'll recover it and we'll be all good. It was not recovered because I had deleted the data folder of that that episode while I was frantically deleting other things to make sure that Audacity wouldn't crash. So I was a fucking idiot. Um, the other part that's really painfully bad about this is that I actually have a time machine backup which backs up when my external hard drive is plugged into my computer for whatever reason. Between the Saturday night that I recorded and when I sat down to edit, I never plugged the fucker in. Maybe it's because I had 30 gigs of space and I just didn't think I needed it. I don't really know. I got way too cocky. Regardless, for about two days straight, I was trying to recover these files. I managed to recover, I was like a quarter of them maybe from iCloud. iCloud does back up my trash can, but because Audacity crashed, I probably lost the files anyways or corrupted a bunch of them. I don't really know, Um, but... I'll put it this way. It was two days straight of troubleshooting, not sleeping, and a lot of crying. And the reason I was so upset about it was because I really felt it was a strong episode. But after seeking various opinions from different friends I knew who know computers, I even reached out to data centers around the city, even willing to pay people, be like, I'm willing to pay money to get this episode back. That's how good it was. I've accepted the fact that unfortunately the episode is gone. Um, Even if I really, really tried, I I would be stuck trying to put together essentially over 7,000 six second audio clips to make the episode. It would just be way too impossible. So easier to re record. And yeah, I should have gotten to that conclusion much earlier ago, but I'm no quitter. And I like to do everything I can to try to get shit back, especially when it's my fuck up. So I was really, really hard on myself for two days, really stressed out about it, really felt just really dumb that I accidentally deleted that. Regardless, um, I'm no quitter and I just thought, not today, Satan. I'm still gonna record and put out an episode this week. Much to everybody's advice to just take a week off, Sarah, for the love of God, just take a break. People won't care. Nah, uh, 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 not doing that. So I get together with my friend Evan, who's been on the show many times. He is a regular on Intoxicated and over on Intoxicated Reviews. And we just did a little AMA episode. So it's random questions from the internet, from our friends, and from Zoe, one of our Patreons, one of our $10 net Patreons. Zoe actually gave us a shit ton of questions for this episode. So thank you so much, Zoe, that we probably would not have had enough questions 
questions otherwise. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thanks to our Patreons in general. And Zoe and Tyler, you guys rock. You guys are why I do this. And in fact, I even thought about it. And so much of why I didn't want to quit and I didn't want to go a week without an episode is because I know you guys are signed up. I know you guys are contributing money. Don't want to let you down. So pulled something together. Hope you guys like it. It was very last minute. I just figured it's better than nothing. I do have some more episodes coming down the pipeline. I am working on getting a backlog. Life has just been insanely crazy and busy lately. I'm trying to juggle it all and stay sane and somewhat healthy. That last part is very tricky for me. Um, But regardless, that's the situation. So thought I would give you a rundown of what happened before I cut to the episode. Reminder to follow us on social media, and that is Facebook and Instagram at Intoxicated Podcast, on Twitter at in underscore toxicated. A kind reminder as well to make sure you're subscribed to the podcast on any app you use. Um, that works. But if you really want to help us out, um, subscribing on Apple Podcasts is what will really help us get out there more. Apple is kind of the the head honcho of the podcast world right now. So if you really love us, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, even if you have your issues with the app, which I do myself, but I will not get into that now. And just to let you know, if you are new to the show, first of all, sorry for hearing my rant about how I'm a shitty podcaster and deleted an episode. Just like count that as a one-off. Um, you know, doesn't happen a lot. But if you are brand new, we do have a second channel, which is under the Intoxicated brand, which does involve drinking, and it is Intoxicated Reviews, hosted by Corey, and he does TV and movie recaps over there on Intoxicated Reviews. If you're listening on the week that this episode is released, he does have a brand new episode up all about Marvel movies. So if you are a comic book movie fan, and if you love the Marvel Cinematic Universe, go check that episode out. He does a wine list two-parter episode, If you're into that, you will very much so enjoy it. And of course, if you want to become a member of our Patreon community, you can head over to our Patreon page. It is patreon.com slash intoxicated. Bunch of different levels on there. You can contribute anywhere from nothing to $20. Make sure to check that out. If you are interested, you could be the next person that we talk about on the show every week. That's about it, you guys. Thanks so much for dealing with me, and I hope you enjoy this very random, impromptu, ask us anything episode with Evan. And welcome back to the Intoxicated Podcast. We are here for an impromptu, I guess would be a UA, ask us anything episode. Mm. I'm here with Evan. Hey, Evan. Hello, Sarah. (laughs) So this is an impromptu episode because... I deleted my originally scheduled episode. So there's that. Um, Sad trombone sound here. Yeah, very sad. I'll explain it in my intro, but yeah, it's just been a a shitty couple days. I, I... I literally just don't know why I was so dumb. But anyways, it is what it is. I was telling Evan earlier that like, I essentially, I went through like the stages of grief. I think I encountered you during anger. (laughs) Yeah. Anger and sadness combined, maybe. Uh, You might have gotten flashbacks to that. Remember that first Oscars episode? Meltdown. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kind of similar to that. I was essentially just at my friend Kurt's place on his computer trying to work some PC magic on there. And Evan came in when I was like in pure troubleshooting mode like i was just like don't fucking talk to me no one distract me like i'm just i'm in it i'm fucking in it um but essentially i recovered my files but they're in six second clips people six second clips not in order of what, in like any an hour order and a half? at all like they're all scattered everywhere it's about like an hour and a half the material they're about and i mean we recorded for over two hours so that's still a oh, lot damn. of the uh, of the files were recovered i mean yeah It is what it is, but I just don't have time to, like, I would have to listen to each clip and then figure out where it went in the puzzle. And who knows how long it would take. A part of me kind of wants to just do it as a side project now. (laughs) And then maybe in two years from now, we'll have the episode. (laughs) Who knows where we'll be in two years. That's very true. Yeah, we have no idea. We have no idea if there'll even be internet in two years, Sarah. Oh, don't say that. Um, We are drinking, though. Ev, what are you drinking? I'm drinking a Garrison Tall Ship. And I am drinking 
cheap red wine that I don't know the name of. I think it's like Peller Estates or something. It's $10. That's cheap. And that's that's the wine I get to have on hand at my house. But I actually do really like it. I'm drinking it with ice because I'm... Basic bitch. I like cold alcohol. All right? Mm-hmm. That is just... Oh my, I, I can't stop looking at her right there. Well, she keeps licking the house. She... <laughs> She like, loves she's it. Licking, your cat's licking her little. <laughs> she house. likes to eat hair. Well, it's like she's grooming it. A yeah, bit. it's it's really, really, really weird. Um, she's being a little strange. Yeah, but anyways, so we're gonna do some. I compiled some random questions from the internet that we're gonna go over. Oh, the internet! Thank you, internet. <laughs> Thank you, internet. For these questions. Um, some of them are actually from, from real life people that, that I, well, yeah, you know too. Uh, people that we know. So Rather what, than just hungry ghosts. <laughs> hungry, but I want to start with something interesting, which is, is that I put this on Reddit and like a fucking idiot. Fucking I don't know Reddit. what I was thinking. So I discovered the AMA subreddit and I'm like scrolling through and I'm like, these, these are pretty ridiculous and self-serving anyways. So this is the perfect spot to post my question. <laughs> yeah. And I noticed that like just random people were doing random AMAs and actually getting people asking them questions. Well, like the one you're saying about like the the, the yeah. pee hole, dick, pencil in the Someone pee hole. literally wrote that like their girlfriend put a pencil in their pee hole like a couple months ago. Ask me anything. <laughs> stuff like, like seriously. that. Yeah, it was like stuff like what that, like average Joe things. And did I was it, like, Did okay. it get infected? How bad was the infection? Did yeah. It, did it swell? I mean, there are a lot of questions that I would have for that person. <laughs> I would like to have I would like to have them on. Was peeing painful? Yeah, I, really how, them. How painful was peeing? But I put the question up. Okay, so I put on here that I host a drunk podcast in the East Coast of Canada. I should have said on the East Coast of Canada. I'm picking myself apart now. But anyway, I stupidly deleted this week's episode and while drinking away my problems, need to pull together, need to pull an episode out of my ass. AMA. So like, ask me anything. And we got some comments and none of them were nice. (laughs) Well, the guy who, um, the guy who said he likes trees, I mean... (laughs) That's that's all right, I guess. I didn't know that about uh, deadly nightshade, by the way. So what's is that? Is that a type of? That's a plant. Plant. What What did he say about it? Oh, that uh, it has properties which uh, help uh, with Alzheimer's. Ah, that's kind of neat. Yeah. So there you go. I learned um, something. My favorite one was this guy who said, "Now maybe you read it because I cannot pronounce the word." You cannot pronounce. Uh, well, it, it's just a, the word is. It's a new word. It doesn't roll off the tongue easily for me. Uh, well, he, he, I loved both his comments, actually. Thank you, Ruffled Feathers 411 Um, you fucking prude. Uh, have a down vote, you fucking derelict. Uh, then I'm sure your mom won't mind missing your podcast this week. Which is funny, because her mom doesn't know she has a podcast. Yeah. Ha, so put a penis, in, so put a pencil in your pee hole. Yeah, so those were two of our, our favorite ones. We're not feeding the trolls here, but I just want to say that his word choice was on point. Derelict. So derelict means, oh, yeah. Evan, do the honors. Well, I think what he means is he's just describing you as a shitty person, but in a, a, an object which is in very poor condition as a result of disuse and neglect. <laughs> He's yeah. not wrong. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> My diet mainly consists of Doritos, you know, and pop. And Although so. I haven't suffered too much neglect in my life. I eat a green thing every now and then, so I just don't die. <laughs> like, every really. now and then I feel I feel the need. I fucking hate vegetables. I really, really do. They're they're not, to me, they're just not, not my thing. <laughs> it's the food my food eats. Um, I'm just scroll in here was this a publicity stunt i don't really think it's too self-promotion-y but i know that reddit's like against self-promotion in any way shape or form which Plus, is i mean i don't know publicity stunt pretty shitty stunt yay i'm a shitty podcaster and i deleted my episode come yeah. listen to us yeah <laughs> <laughs> hmm, that makes me want to listen more <laughs> hmm. it's okay. already working so let's get to these fucking questions eh 
So, first question comes in from my friend Stephen George. Uh, and I can always rely on Stephen George to, like, provide some profound fucking questions. Because I feel like the episode you and I did back in September that also did... The Phantom episode. That also got deleted. I swear it's only happened three times. <laughs> I think. Yeah, actually. It's only happened three times. And one of those was the Mark episode that I did actually recover. Mm. But anyway... Uh, he he also gave us a really profound question on that episode as well. So he he comes through with these questions. So his question is, is question. personality nothing more than a series of connections and chemical reactions in our brains? And if so, is it possible to recreate those exact connections to create a personality exactly as us? Uh, or is there something else? Or is there something more to a personality? So I think from what I gather, this question is essentially like, is it just chemicals and like physical stuff or is there more to it? That's interesting. And uh, to answer that, um, I am reminded of a segment from the, what was it, 1989 Cosmos uh, featuring uh, Carl Sagan, who, you know, had in front of him all of the, um, you know, uh, compounds and elements and components that make up a human. Ooh, you know, maybe uh, a lot. Well, you know, like it's certain, mostly water, and uh, he, you know, added them all together in one, you know, sort of vat, mm. and was like, "There, human," and you know, it wasn't a human, obviously. So, I mean, I feel like yes, like uh, that is essentially like all our personality is is just chemicals and electrical impulses and a series of like socioeconomic circumstances but at the same time like you know a series of socioeconomic circumstances which has shaped uh help shape our personality and feel like who we are like our reactions to things but that's what i was gonna say i feel like experience life experience is that factor but you know like i don't think uh you could like just take all those i think i still think if you took all those uh, components and then plug them into an algorithm or whatever and you know to create like a you know, predictive model of you know like your personality and then have a computer or a program like you know react the way you would react or say things that like you would say i don't think it would add up i don't think so either like do we think westworld could be a thing where we could make hosts just like us well i mean you know and Westworld does a good job of uh, showing the complexities and problems and, uh, you know, the evolution that was necessary to uh, sort of take them there. Mm. I don't know. I think I think there's more to it, but but I don't really know what that is. I, I, I just think that, like, yeah, some, you could make two humans with the same personality. Some would argue the soul. Yeah. I mean, is this question kind of dancing around the whole, like, God question? Or maybe not God, but, you know, like, some people... So, like... You get some people who will say, like, you're an old soul. <laughs> Do you, have you ever heard of that phrase? And I don't really get that phrase. Like, what does that mean? You're an old soul. Uh, Something about, like, it's some you've been around mostly. this earth before um, kind of thing. Yeah, which is also, you know, a ridiculous fallacy. I mean, if you think about it, like, the human population has doubled in the last 50 years. If you look at where, like, where do all these new souls come from? Like, you know, if you really do believe in all that, like, bullshit of, like, you know, like, reincarnation and, like, one eternal soul, you know, then does that, what does that mean? Does that mean, like, half of us are first round humans or... Yeah, really. Or, or like, you know, like, well, half of us are, like, you know, actually Cleopatra and, like, half of us have, like, only come around in the last 50 years. Like, mm. like, like, what, like, what's that all about? So... I wonder if there was a BuzzFeed quiz for this. <laughs> I'm a new soul. Because <laughs> I asked that question, I'm clearly not an old soul. <laughs> oh, there's no such thing as old soul. This is my whole point. Uh, okay, so you, you don't think? That, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I never really understood that when people say that. Like, I, and I get that it like it, it's someone's essence, maybe, or like maybe they. Maybe it's to describe someone who's, like, mature beyond their years. Like, that's how I always think that I took it. Yeah, and that's the, I guess that's, yeah. There is a play BuzzFeed. 
that says, are you truly an old soul? Oh, God, of course there is. Um, I'm just going to see how long this is or what kind of questions. Should we do it? No. Just for fun. <laughs> but yes. I'm so curious. Okay, we're getting the answer. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm 50% old soul. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, oh man. That was I mean, that's sort of that like, was, that was not worth the journey. No, that, like, that, that was not worth the journey at like 50%, all. 50% like what is that? Like that's like that's sort of like a yay or nay sort of situation, you know? It's like either yes or no. Actually, in some ways I kind of agree with it cuz I you can't be fifty percent old soul. Like I think your soul's either like old or new. I think I'm new. <laughs> well, here's here here's this is for you. Oh! <laughs> oh my God! What the? Ah, she's a new soul too. Anyway, that's enough of it because I don't want to get sued. What uh? What was the name of that singer again? Uh, Yael Naim. Oh, right, 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 right. It was featured on a MacBook Air commercial. Okay, we're going to move on. But, SG, I hope that kind of answered your question. <laughs> I think we both agree that it's not just scientific stuff. No. That uh, makes up a person. I think experience is so much of it. To so, yeah, Because if you mind. clone me and you put her in a different yeah. situation or, like, country or, yeah. or whatever, it would be a different Sarah. A totally different experience. Totally different upbringing, totally different. But there are things in a personality. But there would probably be things steadfast. which are, yeah. yeah, yeah, that are steadfast, like that have never changed. So that's neat. Much like in the game Horizon Zero Dawn. I don't know that game. Oh, because I don't know any video games. <laughs> um, but that's a thing for Tarvold's Quest. Go subscribe to their YouTube channel. Uh, they do awesome stuff over there. Uh, Jesse had to put a warning on his most recent video because it was very disturbing, apparently. Oh, why? So we, yeah, it was like a, someone committed suicide in it. And so we had in to, his video, like like in the game, like oh. in the game, a character <laughs> in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh God, I'm like fucking Jesus. Mm. And and, he, and he's like, dude, do I put the video on anyway? I mean, like my friend committed suicide, but like Logan Paul style. Jesus. But anyways, Jesse actually wrote as well. His question was, would you be happier if you lived completely off the grid? It's a hard no for me. Oh. Hard no. But. You know what? So much of your life. For it. So much of your time and energy would be spent on things which you take for granted now that it would occupy. Mm. Like, in some ways, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might not have. You might not have t the time to be unhappy because you're either, you know, doing the things which are keeping you alive or you are dying. That's very true. And like, that would be my argument for it is that I feel like there would be a very hellish adjustment period <laughs> where, well, I mean, like, let's be honest, like, I just fucking love the internet. So yeah. me, me going without, but to me. I am not a, I have never been a camper, like I love electricity and I love warm showers and I love, and my thing is like, my thing with all of that is, is like, I wouldn't be able to see people and that would be what I would probably hate the most, is yeah, not being around other humans. It's uh, like the episode of uh, Parks and Rec where Ron Swanson takes uh, Tom Haverford into the woods and- uh, No, that's me! He spends the whole time- <laughs> Like talking about his internet routine. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Um. So I, that's that's you. I, I, I do think that being connected all the time can wear down on you, and that's why it's important to take social media breaks every now and then. And believe it or not, I've done it, and it's it's a good reset to do for sure. I I love social media, but I fucking admit it's exhausting sometimes. Actually, and it's it's really good to take a break every now and then. And this question is is actually very very mm, serendipitous, I guess, mm. because um mo very recently um a mag like a I think it was like an 
I don't know if it was like outdoor living or like something by some kind of magazine was just on my coffee table. And the whole thing, the whole of it was dedicated to like living off the grid. Ah. And it started with like, you know, it's like page one, like choosing your land, you know, and then it's like how to build a log cabin, you know, like and talking about like different types of way to make the wood stack on top of each other to make the log cabin. You know, and like all the stuff and, um, you know, how to build an aquifer and like how to, you know, purify water and see like skin a rabbit and like. Those are things that I feel like I need to know. Skin a rabbit? I don't want to. No, like just like survival, like survival tips and shit. Mm. Like, cause I really don't have the slightest fucking idea and I should know these things not because I want to do them, but just in case, <laughs> like well. just in case something were to happen, like. It would also be the first step towards um, getting you prepared to go camping. I I have no desire. <laughs> yeah, I know. None. Listen. We just have like, to like me... kidnap you and then like, like, it's, like bye bye Sarah. Here it's not that now. I don't love nature. I think nature's great. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I love going for walks and hikes in nature, but I like returning to my home, <laughs> having a shower, powers. and going to bed. It. In a, like, you know, with a roof over my head in a bed. Because I'm, I think so much of this is because I'm a shitty sleeper and I would just not sleep if I went camping. I just wouldn't. And when I don't sleep, I'm a shit, shit human when I don't sleep. Yeah. And, um, you know what? No one sleeps good when they go camping. No one goes camping and, like, comes out of their tent in the morning and goes, Oh, I, like, I haven't slept co- that good in years. <laughs> and sips oh. the coffee by the lake, like. Well, no, you do that because you need <laughs> to do that because, A, that's what camping is for. And, B, you need that coffee to supplement the shitty sleep you just had. Yeah. So, I, it, yeah. There is something to the point about being off the grid of saying that you wouldn't take you would actually appreciate life more because like you said, you would appreciate the things you normally take for granted. There's something huge to be said for that. And honestly, like some of the funnest times that I think I like, I think I've had, you know, um, were camping and road trips Mm -hmm. and like, like, like my road trip down to like Alabama. Right. Um, Like I think back to, you know, you know, various memories and like, you know, like, it like it's weird because like, like the sleep was shitty yeah. and like, you know, I got up, like I went to bed later and got up earlier, but like, yeah. you know, like it was, um, I mean, I think if it was you're okay. having fun. We weren't like <laughs> <laughs> at the time that that road trip was like a nightmare. Um, it's, it, it generated a lot of fond memories, but uh, a lot of stressful moments at the time. Right. Yeah. There was Brendan's whole concussion that we kind of laughed off. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Sorry, Brendan. And actually, I think that that leads in good to another one of these questions. Sweet. Which is, what is the dumbest way you've ever been injured? So I know I know with me what mine is. Do you know yours? The dumbest way that I've injured myself. Um. Dumbest way. Not like most extreme way, but like. The dumbest fucking way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I haven't I, had any big, like, really big injuries. But I all think, small. I th- yeah, I, like, I haven't really injured myself, like, too bad. But, like, I, I, I can think of a pretty stupid fucking injury that I gave myself. <laughs> uh, like, I mean, like, my, my best injury was was inflicted by my cat, but that's a Is whole it the eye? Thing. Yeah. <laughs> he scr- scratched your eyeball? Yeah, my eyeball. Oh, that would anyway. suck. But, uh, okay, uh, so, um, as for injuries that I've done to myself, like, I know in, like, I think it was, uh, like, it was when I lived here, uh, so, I guess it would have been, like, a year ago or so, um, and I was walking through, it was at night, and I was walking through, uh, the hole in the fence in oh, the back yeah. parking lot, um, behind the property yeah where we are and i don't know why but for some reason i felt like i had to jump through the hole <laughs> i swear to god i wasn't drunk um but i jumped straight into uh 
like like forehead first into the the metal bar on the top of like the fence part. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like I I I I went straight into it like you know full yeah. force without even seeing it at all. Oh, also that reminds me of the time that I was playing a uh, flashlight tag and on a cow f- on a farm and ran into a uh, cow fence and oh like, my god got clotheslined. <laughs> By like, that's always the funny. By Whenever I see that an electric movies, fence. It just me electric. So you got shocked. Uh, oh yeah, it was just like. Oh shit. And just like my body feels funny. Like I'm, I'm on the ground. Oh my god. So there's two for you. That's yeah. so mine. I know for sure. Um, it would have been like two or three years ago or something like that. I was getting in a cab on the r- way to trivia. Hey, I remember that. And opened the cab door. Into. Too close to my fucking head and slammed it, slammed the corner, like that sharp corner part of the door into my head. Don't know why. Um, No excuses at all. But like it hit my head and it like knocked me back. And like it just kind of just felt like I just bumped my head. And I remember like getting in the cab and feeling... Oh, like there's water on my forehead, but it was blood. <laughs> and the cab driver had a diaper there. What? Yeah, like a clean diaper. I think it might have been like a new dad or something. I mean, he had just had diaper. I know it's very weird. Yeah, let's go with that new dad. <laughs> yeah, I like that new dad. Our brain sometimes makes up things to make it like a defense mechanism like i don't want to think about why i was a diaper mm-hmm. so i just go to he was a new dad mm-hmm. but he like gave me that and then i just remember just being like okay like i'm gonna go back inside now <laughs> and my sisters drove me to the emergency Wait. room where i got stitches so you put the diaper on your head like he he because i was bleeding yeah and like he was just like reaching for whatever was nearby yeah and and then I was just like, I'm going to not not take this cab right now. <laughs> and I'm going to go back inside. But here's the cool part. Yeah. Because I booked it with the app. Yeah. He actually had my phone number. Yeah. And when I went to the emergency room, I actually got stitches. It was the first time I ever gotten, had ever gotten stitches. And I was so fucking nervous. I don't know why. I just First time you got stitches? First time ever. Okay. It's late. Late yeah, life. I don't think I've ever had stitches before, okay. unless I was really super young, but I don't I don't remember that. But <laughs> he actually texted me being like, just checking in to see if you're okay. <laughs> Ooh, not a liability lawsuit. Mm. I opened a door onto my own head. and Their cut- doors were too sharp. Sharp. And I cut open... Like, it was right under my eyebrow, like, almost flush with my eyebrow. Any closer, they would have had to have probably shaved my eyebrow. <laughs> and they even made a joke when they were giving me stitches. They're like, we're going to have to shave that whole eyebrow off. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? And then they're like, now nah, we're kidding. And you're, think- and and you're like, thinking to yourself, oh, I want to draw one on. I was just like, yeah, good Good call on that. Good call on that. That'd be great, though. Like, if you only had one eyebrow and you had to draw one, you can make it, like, arched. So, like, you're always, like, ass- like looking poised. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, here's... I like this question because I know... I think I know one of your answers. What quote or saying do people spout, uh, like, or say a lot, I guess, but it's completely BS? I know yours. Do you even know yours? It is what it is! Undying. So why do you why do you hate that saying? Um, I like saying that, but it is a cop out of a saying. It probably goes back to the Big Bang Theory, and um, the fact that it goes back to the Big Bang Theory is part of what makes me hate it. Um, but uh, that in itself, I mean, I just I just hate the saying. Um, it is what I, it is. I've heard it so many times, and like it's just one of those things that like so many people just say, and. I think there's something just about like like the, those sounds. <laughs> so so because I mean it doesn't really mean anything. It is what it is. But just saying like like the like the the phonetic sort of like structure like it is what it is 
saying that like it has yeah. like sort of a rhythm to it. There is, yeah, for sure. You know, and it's just so I think that's why people say it the way yeah. they do, and in that way, I think it's sort of like it's sort of viral. Mm. Like I think people hear it and then you know they start saying it. I think it's a way of people convincing themselves that they're over something when really they're not. Well, I don't think there's much meaning behind the word. I think there is for sure. Well, because I mean, it's, I, it's I think, saying like like the situation is what the situ like nothing can change the situation is essentially what it's saying. Yeah. But I just think that sometimes people say it even though they might still be trying to change the situation. I don't. But agree they with say that. it to make it appear like they've moved on when really they haven't. I don't agree with that. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's the way you're using it. I mean, it. it is what it is. I mean, oh, fuck you. <laughs> but I mean, that's it. Like, it's so ambiguous. And, uh, <laughs> like, I mean, it means different things to different people. But I think that's, that's why I think people just say it, just to say it. But I've just, I've never heard that phrase be said naturally and have not had it sandwiched with a lot of explanation about the situation. I've had people just say, just. Like, they're just filling empty space. Yeah, like, it is what it is. Shrug. Like, yeah. like even, not even in context to, like, any situation, just being like, it is what it is, and being like, like, you know, as if they're just saying, like, you know, how is the weather, or, like, I don't know. Yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah. yeah. I don't like, what phrase do I not like that people say a lot? It's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. Oh, yeah, well. Oh no, I got it. That's I got a gagger. it. It comes around when you when you'll least expect it. Fucking hate that phrase. Mm. Fuck off with that phrase. Go fuck yourself. Seriously. Do not tell me to not want something. Mm. Like that's it's essentially saying don't want things and you'll yeah. get them. <laughs> like by that logic is like I shouldn't want anything. I shouldn't want anything. And I I, I do, don't want food. But I, I do, don't want air. Yeah, exactly. I do abide by the don't have high expectations about life because that way you'll just you'll be disappointed a lot i do i do agree with that 100 percent. but to just like not want things like that's unrealistic and not human nature well it's, it, this is another th example of, like someone people just like they're just saying it but i mean like it, it doesn't it doesn't really mean anything exactly yeah you know. These are perfect examples of that question. Like, it's just BS. Just meaningless. I actually have several questions from Zoe, one of our Patreons. I put this on our Patreon page, and Zoe commented with a bunch of questions, yeah. Goddamn. So let's go over a couple All of right, these. Zoe. What's the most epic way you've quit or been fired? I have never epically quit or been fired from anything because I have, I guess, I quit being a lifeguard, but I mean. But not in an epic way. You were just like, here's my two, here's my two weeks notice. <laughs> I think so. Like, yeah. it was so long ago. Um, I think for me, it was having my mom call DQ. Oh yeah, and quit for me <laughs> when I was sixteen. <laughs> oh. People don't believe me, but I did not know she was doing that. I believe you. And she quit on my behalf. Mic drop, motherfuckers. My mom quit a job for me. Yeah, because too Sarah couldn't handle it. I would say like my being fired from a very uh um uh what's the word a very well known call center in Halifax wasn't epic so much in like how the firing happened, but it was epic in that it made me feel like a piece of shit human because I was essentially walked out of the building, escorted out, like. I don't know, and I get that call centers do that with their firings, but like that's how they um, they do it because they don't want you taking yeah and like stuff from the company. But I I just remember crying like I got out of the building. I didn't cry inside that building because that building does not deserve my tears at all, even though it happened a lot on the job. But anyway, I digress. Um, I cried all the way to the EI office. <laughs> And actually, it was fine because I actually ended up getting a job a week after being fired. So it all worked out. But when I think of like epic, if I'm trying to think about like epic moments of where a job ended, that's what I think of. Like that's where my, my mind goes because all the other ones have either been like 
oh, I got another job or contract ended. Like, there's never been another situation where I was fired for anything epic or anything like that. Um, let's see here. What social stigma does society need to get over? All of them? All of them! Mental illness, mm. uh, I think, is a huge one. Islamophobia. Yeah. There's there's tons, but I think true to my heart is the crazy cat lady stigma. Mm. I think we gotta get over that. Ooh, she has a cat. She's lonely. Like, listen, just because I have a cat and I'm lonely doesn't mean that everyone who owns a cat <laughs> is lonely but also it's like the cat lady thing is like loneliness but also like crazy like you get the crazy girl but then she's also lonely maybe it's true maybe i'm just trying to fight it who knows there's a lot i don't know like i could probably do a whole episode about social stigmas we gotta talk about these things people um what would be the worst thing to hear before going under anesthesia before heart surgery so you're just about to go under. What would be the worst thing to hear? I think oops. <laughs> I think <laughs> oops. This is my first time. Or yeah. a bunch yeah. of things falling all over the place. That mm. would kind of suck to hear. Yep. Or a oh no 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really bad. <laughs> oh man, I've never gone completely under with anesthesia though. Have you? Never. I've never. I'm actually terrified of it. I would almost rather be awake. Uh, I think the closest I ever came was uh, there's a period in my life when they were contemplating um, taking out my wisdom teeth. And they have to, I don't know if they put you fully under for that or if they just dope you up. But um, yeah, they decided not to go through with that. Ugh. So I've never been in this. See, I just refuse. I refuse to have my wisdom teeth taken out. Every time I go to the dentist, they're like, you need to take those out. And I'm like, nah. Okay. Because they're not, they're growing up. Like, they're growing through my gums. Okay. Um, Like, they're almost fully grown in. They give me a headache, like, once a year. And that's about it. Mm. Why the fuck are you, like, A, I don't have benefits. So how the fuck am I paying for that shit? And I don't want to go through, yeah, I don't want to be, like, go through unnecessary surgery. It's yeah. unnecessary. Like, our dentist just supposed to fucking tell you, you got to get those out every single time, it feels like. Like, it's almost like they're just, they're required to say that, regardless of what your teeth situation is. Fucking dentists. God. Thinking they know more than me. I know, right? <laughs> um, What would a world populated by clones of you be like? <laughs> Destroyed within, like, four months. God. Yeah, it would not be good. I mean... I think your clones would do better than my clones. But no, I mean like like there's no procreation, there's <laughs> Yeah. <coughs> I mean, I mean like, if like you the, had a clone of you, would, would like, your would your clones be gay for each other? <laughs> so I mean like I mean like you know, I guess you just make more clones and the clones would make more clones. But I mean like at a certain point like you know, like there there's a certain like degradation. Well for me, a world of clones Genetic of me material. would be... Sephora would just, like... The sales would just go way up, for sure. Well, who would be working at the Sephora? Me. Yeah. And who would be owning the Sephora? Oh, I would, uh, I would who be... Who would be making the, the products? Oh, uh, I'd who be doing be, everything. Yeah, like... I would only make the makeup that I it's, want, selfishly. It's like... Uh, <laughs> well, exactly. Like, the only... But, I mean, like... Wait, like you know would there be any point in like you you having to pay for anything you know like or be late for rent you would owe yourself like you would owe other clones of you rent oh man there some be, clones of you would be doing better than other like more it would, successful just be, it would than be a other disaster for any situation really yeah it, it's like that episode of rick and morty uh reclantis adventure uh, the real reclantis uh, adventure all right so, what oh i love this question because I love that you think that I have experience in this area, but I totally don't. It's what what are your important rules when going on a date? Look nice, I think, is one. Mm. Or like, look, feel yourself. Like, make sure that you like how you look, however that may be. Um, don't eat. <laughs> what if you go to a restaurant? 
Never go to a restaurant on your first date. Ooh, that's a great rule. For me, anyways, I would not want to go to a restaurant and have a meal with somebody on a first date for so many reasons. Like, I don't know. I feel like eating food is a very, like, I think it's because I'm a messy eater. I don't want a guy to see that until, like, six months in or so. Maybe that's extreme. (laughs) Maybe there's a stigma. Maybe there's a stigma that uh, society should get over. Other eating in front of others. It's mostly my stomach, though, to be honest. Like, I don't want to have digestive problems mm. uh, if I'm if I want to be getting sexy with somebody. Mm. So, like, I say keep it to drinks or coffee, like something simple like that. Coffee's bad. But I, other than that, I think the only other thing I would say is like for both people, don't come on too strong right afterwards. Like, don't send a text, like, the second you walk away from the guy being like, I had so much fun! But I also don't believe in the whole, like, you need to wait 24 hours. I would just say just don't send it right away. Because I had that happen, and I find that that is a little bit weird. Like, wait until the next day. But don't there are no rules, just be you! (laughs) What about, what about 48 hours is that too long no i almost feel like there's a sweet spot between 24 and 48 because uh, it well that said i'm needy so i'm not most people i would love to get a text message like the next day okay so like 128 hours would be too long wouldn't be too long it's just you i might spiral into paranoia by then <laughs> <laughs> like i just might be like oh he doesn't like me i'm done bye what did I do? Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's, I really don't have a lot of experience with dating, but those are my, those are my things. And ask a lot of questions. Mm. Like, I would say go into it being, pre- being prepared to talk about you, but like, ha- it's kind of like a job interview. Yeah. But like, have questions prepared for them. Like, know enough about them that you can ask some questions. Mm-hmm. And at least try to keep a conversation going. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that it... No like, dead-end sentences. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you might ask questions and they might they might just give one-word answers, but at least you're fucking trying. That's what it's all about. Do you have any d- tips for dating? Wear pants. Wear pants. As opposed to... Cargo shorts. Ah. I never really even thought of that. If a guy shows up with cargo shorts, it's, it's not a good sign. I mean... I don't really as notice. A guy, as a guy... Wear pants, cargo shorts. What about any other like mental tips or tricks, or like any, just wear pants? Is it just that easy? No, I mean, like a lot of the stuff that you're talking about. It's I think the same. I think my basically rules are pretty same. good, other than the don't eat one, which I know isn't for everybody, but that's just my personal rule. Oh, well, I agree with you on uh, yeah, not eat, going to a restaurant the first date. Ask a lot of questions. No dead end sentences. Don't be too clingy, but like don't, then, but also don't like think that you have to go by these mm, wait a certain amount of time like just do what feels natural and like whatever they can fuck off if they don't like it these people who like are just like too many people want to date me I, I don't understand it but anyway mm. anywho um, if you were a ghost and could, could possess people what would you make them do if you were a ghost and could possess people yeah like wow. I guess you would Jesus so you're like an evil, scary poltergeist. I mean, like, there's no, there's no fun possession. Like, I mean, there's like, ha ha, a ghost possessed me. He made me dance a jig. It was great. <laughs> I'd make them walk to I, an ATM, or I'd make them walk to their computer and email transfer me money. Oh, what would I do? Probably just something really random and creepy. To be completely honest. Yeah. Oh yeah, like maybe like fuck with someone. Uh, ooh, yeah. Maybe, like, fuck with someone, like, if I died before, like, uh, like, Greg or, like, you or someone, you know, like, I'd just, like, make this for some person come up and say something, like, only I would know. <laughs> like, <gasps> That's like, a great one! And then, you, and, like, walk away, and then you'd be like, what? But also, too, like, I would love to get a glimpse into other people's lives. Huh. A little bit of a voyeur there, aren't you? Yikes. That actually goes into another question that we have here. Are you a voyeur? Well, actually, Mark... Thanks for the question, Mark. You stumped me on this one, but I, it kind of transitions. Thanks in. for the question. This kind of transitions into it a bit. So his question I like was: him that. Um, so he asked, "What's a fetish you have?" Um, 
And how did you find out that you have it? Okay. So my, and then I wrote him back just being like, well, what's the difference between a fetish and a kink? And he said, and I don't know if this is Google, like taken right from Google or not, Mm -hmm. but he said that a kink is the use of props, costumes, and role play to enhance partner intimacy. And a fetish is when the props, costumes, or role play replace the partner and the intimacy. So, like, if you have a... Yeah, like a... Like, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. A special attachment to your, like, vibrator. But see, and this is this or, is my, this is my response to this question. I don't think that that's a fetish because I just think that's normal for people to masturbate with vibrators. Like I don't think, like I do not have a partner and therefore I use a vibrator. It's not like I am choosing a vibrator over a partner. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. So I don't consider that a fetish at all. In fact, I don't think I have any fetishes really. Like, I might have kinks, but those are things, like, I would want to do with somebody. Mm. Um, But, and I wouldn't say, like, I would say the closest thing, I wouldn't say I have a foot fetish, but I do love me a foot massage. (laughs) I really love it. And I know most, and, like, most people that I talk to are like, I hate anyone touching my feet, and I hate feet, and I'm like, I don't mind them. I'm not sexually, like, turned on by it. I just enjoy foot massages. Because feet are weird. But maybe that's, but like maybe that's could be the start of a foot fetish if I was ever in a situation. I don't know. Where is this podcast going? <laughs> Where is this going? <laughs> what are you saying, Sarah? I don't think so at all. I just, I just find it relaxing. But do you like long masculine toes, or like are you more like a short stubby kind of person? Um, long. Oh God. Happy medium. Okay. Maybe. You don't want you don't want foot fingers, but you don't want like little nubbins. <laughs> little nubbins kind of freaks me out a bit. <laughs> maybe it's because we are talking about toes here. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's because it feels more childlike. Mm-hmm. So that kind of weirds me out. But I don't think. What about you? Do you have any fetishes? Like this is a really personal question. But I genuinely thought about this, and I don't think I have any. I'm a pretty normal, and I don't want to use the word normal either. I'm pretty like average i watch porn i have a vibrator like there's yeah. nothing really fetishy about what i do um is porn a fetish uh, i guess it could be not really it is replacing I mean, a partner I, though well i guess if you choose porn over like sex with the real person which would be mind-boggling to me yeah. that boggles my that mind. is yeah so like i don't so for that reason alone i don't think i have fetishes that's not to say that i won't get one um sorry we're sucking your question mac yeah this is a, but i think like he he asked two people that, like, like, we just watch a lot of porn like you know what i mean like that's yeah. kind of our thing right mm-hmm. all right let's let's see what else we got here um ooh, if you could know the absolute and total truth to one question what question would you ask the absolute and total truth to any one question that's it's just too it's too hard there's too many questions i'm just like trying to think of what i always think about what would be a good useful one just to would you want to know like how you would die or when you'll die am i the only one who thinks about death all the time (laughs) definitely not (laughs) like constantly like would it be a selfish question or more of a like better in the world question i mean like (laughs) Because, like, I'm thinking of, like, there's so many questions I'm thinking about, but then I discredit each of them because, to be honest, the knowing, I would be very unhappy knowing. Actually, you know what? Uh, if, is there a God? That's a, uh, my mind kept going there, too. And my mind also went to the whole, like, what's the purpose of life? Or, like, how will I find, like, because I kind of went to, like, what is my purpose? Because I think I have an idea of what my purpose is, but, like, I would like to... Like, if I knew that, that would be good to know, I guess. I don't know. But the God, I think God or is there something after death? That's how I would phrase it. Is there an afterlife? Yeah. Because I don't know if I believe in, like, a God per se. I don't. Well, I mean, I don't think I, yeah. But yeah. No, but is being, able, being able to be like, ah, there there is something which created everything. Okay. Guess I better start believing in something because yeah. 
Yeah, but I mean, at that point, it's not belief. It's just knowledge. See, for so. me, I would want to find a comfort in that death isn't the scary thing that I make it out to be. So, like, I would want to know, is there something else after this? I'm going to continue being absolutely petrified of every single car that passes me on the road. Um, because that's just, I'm just absolutely paranoid about How death. And that's function? what I think about every day. I think about it every single day. Like, every single day, I, I will walk out into the world and just be like, maybe today. Maybe today. Maybe today. So, you, you walk by and like, that could have killed me? That could have killed me? That no, kill me? but I'm convinced that I'm either going to get hit by a car or be in a car accident or something. Um, because I've had too many close fucking calls with almost being hit by cars to, like, just walk out onto the street thinking that I'm, ooh, I have a walk sign, so I'm safe. I just mm. don't believe in that anymore because <laughs> I've all, almost been hit so many times. But I think I would choose that question because I think if I knew, it'll all be okay. Like, yeah, you're going to die at some point. But, like, oh, you're going to, like, maybe we'll go to the good place. Which is actually the bad place. <laughs> Spoilers. Well, not it's not really a spoiler, but but maybe we could actually go to. I predicted that one. A suburbia, led by Ted Danson. That'd be pretty awesome. Mm. It really would be. Yeah, I think I think I agree with you on that question. Because who would pick anything else? Like one question. Like because you'd have to pick one question that would encompass so many things. Well. Not necessarily. It could, it could be something as simple as how do they get the camel in the camel bar? I was thinking of that too, but have they figured that out yet? Oh, well, I mean, it's, I mean, I'm sure it's just, I'm sure the answer would be very underwhelming. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. And I, I mean, like, I feel like with, with so many of these things, I feel like the answers would either be disappointing or underwhelming or, you know, yeah, depressing. I, this is a cool question. What's the closest thing to real magic? Um, particle physics, um, like quantum physics. Um, yeah, like the Large Hadron Collider, I suppose. You know, um, science of advanced enough, blah, 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 is indistingu- indistinguishable from magic. That's a quote by somebody, but I can't Ooh, remember. Who. I like that quote. I mean, there's a lot of really fucking cool things, but I think my answer would be time zones. (laughs) (laughs) Stanford. So Stanford Fleming standard time. Because it it boggles my fucking mind that you can get on this tube, you fly into the air, (laughs) and it takes you to a place, like not even across the world or you know like you're just going to like ontario or something and and like bam the time's different like you're an hour behind in time or yep. like someone in japan is 12 hours ahead of you yep or yep or our people in australia are based like they're basically in the future yeah it to me that's magic mm-hmm. i mean it's also science it is it's just <laughs> but it's magic it's just physics <laughs> but it's magic I like this next one, too, because I, I have so many responses to this. What problem or situation did TV slash movies make you think would be common, but when you grew up, you found out it wasn't? Um, There's so many. Forest fires. <laughs> um, fires in general. I was just I thinking think, that. Actually. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm like. I was, Fuck. Uh, I was like, literally just thinking that. I'm like, it feels like in every TV or movie, it's like someone's apartment just catches on fire. You're trapped by fire somehow. <laughs> oh no, betrayed by fire once again. Um, yeah, fires. Um, for me, it's when you express your feelings to somebody and you walk away, that they will come after you. Ah, yes. That is, that has, well, okay. Or, and, Maybe it's and, just or never the, happened to me. And or the airport chase. Airport chase, yeah. The um, uh, run into the room right at the stroke of midnight on New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. OC style. Ruin me. Ruin me. Ruin me for New Year's Eve. It's exactly why I hate New Year's Eve. I can't, um, I will not have a good New Year's Eve until a guy does that. Just putting it out there. Um, that, Yeah. Holy fuck, what other ones are there? Like, right before the first kiss, someone will say something really clever and then mm. kiss you. That never happens. Yeah, witty one-liners in general. Witty one-liners. Um, 
endless free time when they don't seem to have jobs. <laughs> no yeah. one seems to commute. Or being able to f- afford a ridiculous uh, apartment in New York. Yeah. Yet despite being a chef and a uh, waitress. waitress. Whatever the fuck like that was all about. Um, oh, fuck. On that. They never commute. It's never shown people driving to work or on the subway or like it's very rarely shown that. Oh, this isn't a, a question, but this is a pet peeve of mine is uh, people in on TV and in movies at restaurants um, ordering these like, you know, lavish plates of food and, that, and then just like never touching them. Yes, that's one. I hate that. And also, fucking rooftops. They're not as accessible as the movies and TV makes them out to be. <laughs> it's not like you can walk into any building and find the roof and have access to the roof. Actually, there was that time in New York in downtown Chelsea when I went onto a rooftop with Brendan and uh, some people. Just right, it was just, you could just walk right up and go it was, up. It was very easy. There were, like I was saying it was someone who had like an apartment there. Yeah, we drank wine and played music on the roof and... So is it just in New York, maybe, I wonder? I feel like if I tested this in Halifax, I would get nowhere. (laughs) Oh, and we were in uh, Corey's... uh, Yeah, but he has a key. He works for the building. He was the super. So that that doesn't count. Um, I just mean, like, in these in fucking TV and movies all the time, like, they'll be either at a hotel or, like, in, you know, wherever, and... They just go up to the roof and go out. And it's yeah. just like, no, bitch, that's not life. That's not how it works. Yeah. What's the most useless useless talent that you have? I would argue that all talent is useful. But that's just me. Ooh. Um, I'm really good at video games. <laughs> it's not a useless talent, though. You could, like, you could use that. I'm really good at certain types of video games. Okay. What are the specific games? RPGs. Okay. RPGs. Wait, I got it. Give it. P stands for player. That's right. Is it? And G is for game. Real player game? Oh, very close. Real? Uh, It's, uh. Change some of those letters around and you got the right word. <laughs> Role play. <laughs> oh my god, I'm such a fucking idiot. I'm such a new soul. <laughs> uh, so such a you. Oh my god, that's so funny. Definitely my genre. I don't know if I have any. Like, I mean, even just my general talents are pretty, like, pretty lame. I, I've just like I've never considered myself like. Like, you know how, you, like, there's certain people and you're like, you are a singer or you are a musician or, mm-hmm. like, you are a artist or, mm-hmm. like, y- like, you say you are a blah. Like, be, just being smart. You just being a, book smart you is a talent. You're a nurse. Yeah. You are a... I've just, I've never been that. Yeah. I feel you on that one. So, I don't really know. I mean, I don't even really think I have a useless talent because I don't think I got a lot of general talent. So... Sometimes I feel like I don't know myself like I should. Like when it comes to answering these questions, I'm just like, man, these are things that I've never considered, like, never thought of at all. I'm pretty fast walker. Don't know really when that could come in handy, actually, but I am very fast. And most times people fucking hate it and they make fun of me for it. So what would be on the gag reel of your life? Ooh. <laughs> Is this like... So I'm taking this maybe in a deeper sense of like all the times you probably all the times. Uh, yeah, really? Because I was just thinking of all the times that like I've fallen down, <laughs> like managed to fall down, like walking downstairs or, I, like yeah, the, like I'm I'm pretty sure like there's a long. Reel. That's actually that's actually funnier. Like the most embarrassing moments, kind of thing. And, like, all, like, the things that I've, like, dropped or spilled as a result of, like, me just oh my God, falling I've, on stairs. I've spilled so many things. I would say, yeah, there's lots of... You've fallen down a lot of stairs. I fell down stairs. Oh. Yeah. Really and badly. T- when? Uh, after a date. After hooking up with somebody, I fell down their, 
fell down their stairs. I tell the story on the Hottie Brander episode. Oh, I think I remember that. Yeah, it's um, it was like a cartoon fall. Like I fell and then I went tick 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 down. <laughs> like I fell on my back and then went down the stairs. Oh god! And it hurt for like three weeks. That would most certainly certainly be on my gag reel. Yeah. Um, falling's the fucking worst, especially when. Well, especially with the context of like just coming from a date yeah makes it funnier yeah lots of falls lots of falls uh-huh. that have been like it's always worse when people are like "Ooh, are you okay mm-hmm. and they don't laugh because if they laugh at least you can kind of laugh with them and like <laughs> disguise the fact that you're terribly embarrassed but uh-huh. when when they're like even look like it hurt that's when it's really embarrassing i feel yeah i feel like this last question we could end it on um it's top sheet or no top sheet. Who the fuck asked that? Me. Because uh, I want to talk about it because it actually made me furious. I thought we sold this. We agree on this, don't we? We're pro we, we top do. sheet. We, we did. And uh, like pretty much it like it was overwhelmingly top sheet in favor on the. On the on but the, have you ever the, talked the, to a someone who is against a top sheet and not freaked out at them? Because no, because I mean. I don't. Their I mean, logic makes no sense to me at all. But I don't need to understand their logic because I just know it's flawed. <laughs> it's so flawed. I mean, okay, and, and I also, get it. I just, I'm a hot sleeper and I'm pro top sheet. It's just like I'm a really, like, I get really, really hot when I sleep. But the good thing about a top sheet is, is you can throw that com- com- comforter off and you're good. And also, like, you don't have to wash your comforter as much, bitches. Like, what the fuck? It's a barrier. I'm like, what's easier to wash? A comforter or like a nice little thin sheet? A little sheet. That you can like, I even throw it in with my clothes every now and then. But I don't do laundry like normal people do. I just throw it all in there. I don't separate. I don't do anything. Oh, man. I'm just trying to look, see if there's any other questions. I think that's all the questions we got for this AMA. Well. All right. Okay. Well, I think that about that about wraps her up for this AMA episode. Thanks, Evan, for coming in last minute. I bribed him with pizza. That's how I get guests to come on for last minute episodes. Yeah, it's true. If I seem low energy, it's because I'm always low energy. <laughs> it's energy, but it's also because uh, I'm full of pizza. Yeah, the, the pizza. Full the of pizza and beer. But that's how I that's how I brought people to come on. But anyways, I I thought I would put something out because I feel bad not. Not putting out anything. I don't think this episode will ever see the light of day. That got deleted. Hopefully I'll have it re-recorded. And hopefully we'll have more good stuff coming your way yeah. on Intoxicated. So ring that bell, Evan. Dang. Dang dong. Diara. Di- How do you say it? Cannot, cannot roll off the tongue. No, you cannot. I keep wanting to say dialect. Yep. But it's derelict. Derelict. So it's just Daryl with it. It. Derelict. Daryl. Daryl lick my balls. Derelict. Such a derelict.